All right, so this time I'd like to welcome my very first guest. Her name is Rochelle Smith, and she is a mom, a wife, an adventurer, and in 2019, uh, completed the Camino de Santiago. Uh, Rochelle, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So I am so excited for you to be here because I am currently in the process of planning my first Camino, um, which in a couple months I'll be headed uh, to France to start the journey. Um, for those that don't know what the Camino is, can you explain that shortly? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, the Camino de Santiago is historically a, a pilgrimage, like a Christian, Christian pilgrimage uh, that starts anywhere, basically from your front door uh, to the end point and the final destination of the city of Santiago de Compostela. Uh, that is in Northwestern Spain. There's a cathedral there. And, um, you know, according to history and, and lore and all of these things, the remains of St. James uh, are, are supposed to be in the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for over a thousand years now, since I think about the ninth century or so, uh, you know, Christian pilgrims and well, even non-Christians now um, have been traveling to Santiago to to visit the cathedral and, and the remains of St. James. So that is basically the, <laughs> the gist of a, the pilgrimage. An official starting point at some place where you like. What's that? Is there an official starting place like. Um, uh, there are several officially recognized routes to get to Santiago. So the one that I did is called the uh, Camino Frances because it starts in uh, the town of Saint Jean Pied de Port in 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 France. Um, but like I mentioned, there are there are many routes. So depending on where you are starting from or where you live, you could take a, any number of of different ways to get to Santiago. So how, how long did it take you to get from St. Jean de Port to, to Santiago de Compostela? It took me 38 days, <clears throat> 38 days to walk. Now, I, I had the luxury, um, I was very blessed to have a lot of flexibility in my schedule. Um, I made sure to schedule extra days for you know, potential injuries, if, you know, I wanted to just take the day off and, and sightsee if I got to a point that was like amazing and I wanted to just soak it all in. Um, but it took me 38 days to walk from Saint-Jean to Santiago. Um, and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So 38 days, um, just for me thinking about that's all like, Going to Spain for 38 days, that all I see in my head is dollar signs. How <laughs> it just like, like tons and tons of dollars. How does that work out? Is it is it really expensive to do this? It depends on the person. It depends on the experience that you want to have. Uh, you can go out and splurge and, you know, go to hotels and dine out every single night, uh, you know, fancy restaurants, whatever you want to do. But honestly, it is a, you know, the pilgrim doesn't really have a whole lot of money if you really want to go that route. Um, each albergue or hostel that you stay in, um, uh, they can range anywhere from donativo, meaning you just pay what you can, not even, you know, there's no minimum uh, requirement, uh, but these donativos, they they expect you know you to be able to give what you what you feel yeah. you can give um and uh they range anywhere from donativo to like maybe five euros a night uh some places i stayed up to like 12 euros so again there's uh there's flexibility there uh, there are different kinds of albergues as well you've got your um your municipal albergues which are geared towards I would say those are probably like on the cheaper end. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to save a little bit more money, you're going to have more people. You're going to have like lots of bunks and things like that too. You could, you know, find a, find a hostel that has private rooms and you could, you know, you, you can, you can pay whatever you want to pay. Really. You can find something. <laughs> All right. How did you discover the Camino to put it on your bucket list? What was happening? when you see it? Like, Ooh, I want to do that. Well, um, I, I, I saw the trailer for the movie, The Way. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. Oh, maybe. yeah. Probably, if you've been researching the Camino for any length of time, you probably, you know, come upon this movie, The Way, uh, with uh, Emilio Estevez and uh, what's his name? Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, Martin Sheen, yeah. So I saw the trailer for that when it first came out. I think it was like 2000 or, I don't know, <laughs> a really long time ago now. 
I saw the trailer for it and I thought, oh, that's an interesting story. What is this thing he's talking about, you know, walking across Spain? Uh, and I kind of just thought, oh, that's cool. Uh, didn't really do any research about it. Uh, and then it just kind of kept popping up. I, I don't know. It was really strange. I, I didn't really have a point where I was like, okay, that is on my bucket list for sure. I was thinking about this, you know, like when did I actually decide that I was going to put it on a bucket list and like do the research and everything. Um, and then, oh gosh, when was it? 2000, um, I think around 2016 or so, I went out with some colleagues of mine from work and we went to a restaurant to celebrate someone's retirement. And on the wall was a chalkboard and it said, before I die, I want to dot, dot, dot. And then there were a whole bunch of blank spots on the board and you could see everybody's, you know, bucket list items. And yep. I wrote down, walk the Camino. Like, I don't know <laughs> when I decided that was going to be on my bucket list. Right. But that's what I wrote down. And it struck me like, oh, yeah, yeah I want to do that. Um, and then a couple of years later, I was on a hike with a girlfriend and um, she, we were talking about bucket list items, strangely enough. And I told her that I wanted to do the Camino de Santiago and she didn't know what that was. <laughs> and so I explained to her what it was. <laughs> and then literally maybe like three minutes later, there was this group of um, hikers that was walking towards us mm -hmm. and they had like these little, uh, you know, like name tags, like sticky name tags. And they all had those. I thought, okay, they're probably from a group. <laughs> so, you know, being the curious person that I am, I, I stopped one of them and asked them, you know, like, Hey, are, are you guys like, what kind of hiker group are you from? And they said, we're from the American pilgrims on the Camino. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait a second, That's just to wait. Totally Wait one second. I was just talking about this. And so I think from that point on, I thought, oh, this is a sign. And that's when I really, really started to do more digging and more research about the Camino. Is this something I could do? You know, at the time I was, I was working full time. I, I have a son in school and I'm like, I can't leave to do this. Um, but I did. <laughs> uh, so stars aligned and, you know, yeah. it, it just happened. I actually quit my job and it was just like the perfect timing. So, wow. yeah. And I had a really supportive family. So I think, I think with all those things happening, it, it yeah. So you, you're, you're going on this four, almost 40 day adventure and you're quitting your job. <laughs> What were some of the personal fears and concerns you had to work through uh, when, you, when you decided to make that commitment to taking over a month to walk the, you know, across northern Spain solo? What were some of those? Yeah, things? all kinds of concerns and anxiety. I mean, obviously, there's like the obvious thing, like, can I do it? Like walk across a whole country? <laughs> you know, like every single day for that length of time. Um, I'm a, I'm an avid hiker here at home, um, but I've never done like a through hike. I've never walked day after day, after day, after day, after day for that long. Um, so that was one thing, the physical concerns, can my body handle it? And then, um, you know, as a woman walking solo across the country, a foreign country, um, is it going to be safe? Uh, safety was an, uh, an issue and it's always an issue when I talk to people about the Camino, like, oh, well, weren't you scared to do that? Um, was it safe? And to be quite honest, I, once I got, once I got there and I started walking, it was, I felt very safe. Um, there were probably only a couple times where, you know, I kind of felt a little, un, not, not uneasy, but I wanted to ensure that I would have a safe journey on a particular day. Um, and so on those kinds of days, uh, you know, you listen to your gut, obviously. Uh, and, you know, I would ask other pilgrims, hey, like, are you walking? Are you, are you walking early in the morning? Like, do you mind if I tag along? So those kinds of things um, you kind of prepare for. Um, if you have like a, a game plan, like those are good tips. Like if, if you're worried about traveling a particular section or if you just feel uneasy like maybe if you're walking in the middle of the day and you just kind of feel uncomfortable you know you tag along with some other pilgrims so so safety and just the physical um 
a physical aspect of it. Those were some concerns, but um, it, it, besides like training for the physical, yeah. side, what were what did what did you do to kind of prepare yourself for those other challenges of you know being secure and all that? What did you do to prepare yourself for that? Um, well, uh, I think like like anybody, you know, I did I did research on on YouTube. I watched a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of vlogs, <laughs> a lot of vlogs, a lot of, um, and not just the the Francais, the route that I did. Um, I watched other routes too as well, just to see what other people uh, were doing. Um, but um, I think you just have to do some general research about height, you know, like long hikes and. Um, Oh gosh, what else did I do? I, I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. I, I did like almost everything that I could think of. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Asked other people. I actually had a cousin that walked the Camino. Oh, wow. um, probably maybe like five years before I did. He started at Ronces Valles, so he was mm -hmm. already across the border in Spain. Um, so I talked to him a little bit about it. Uh, but you know, everybody has a different experience. I just wanted to prepare myself for potential things that could go wrong. Like ma I made sure that I had um, uh, a map. Uh, now people sometimes take the actual physical guidebooks with them. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to actually take a photo of every single page of my guidebook so That's that I had it on my phone. So if you have space on your phone, you could do that. Um, perhaps, oh, there are some apps that you can download the yeah. routes of of, you know, whatever route you're taking. I think like the Buen Camino app is a very popular one for pilgrims. Um, so you can kind of follow along, you know, where you're supposed to go. I made sure that I looked at the maps ahead of time, like the night before, like, where am I going the next day? Um, at the end of the night, uh, once I got to my albergue, I would uh, kind of walk the town, obviously just to explore and, you know, take in the, the local sites and these little towns that I probably never would have known about otherwise um, I would uh, walk the town and just kind of check out where the hours are just to make sure I I could get out of the little towns uh, early in the morning that's, because, a, that's a great thing to do yeah, because you know in the, you know if you're leaving as early as I did, I'm an early riser and um, you know I oftentimes left when it was very very dark still and I had a headlamp uh, so if you're leaving when it's dark and you have no idea where you're going <laughs> you might take a wrong turn here or there. So um, those are the kinds of things that I kind of psyched myself up for uh, because I didn't want to get lost. <laughs> yeah. So so you were taking care of yourself in preparation, physically, emotionally, doing those kind of things. And at the same time, you're probably, you know, sharing with family and friends, hey, I'm going to go do this, which, you know, can be jarring, I think. <laughs> other people what was the response from your family and friends that you that you had set this in motion I'm going to cross this off on bucket list I'm going to go do it um how did they react and how do you respond to their reactions I actually didn't tell my mom for quite a long time <laughs> um, and then I think when I told her she just kind of was like okay and then like didn't really get it uh but then when I told her maybe like I don't know, a month or so before I was leaving, I was like, hey, yeah, so remember, I'm, I'm going to Spain. <laughs> and she was like, are you sure? At that point, if she was like, wait, you're really going? Like, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> let me, let me, let me just pick it up. So, uh, yeah, my mom just didn't get it for a while. And, uh, but, you know, she's a very spiritual person. I think this is one of the reasons why I wanted to go as well. Um, and so, so she prayed for me that I would be safe <laughs> on my journey. Um, when I talked to my husband, I guess he was very supportive. Uh, he thought I was a little like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, are you sure you want to do this? You're going to, why is it safe? Right. That is the main question. I think that the people who are you know, don't know anything about the trail. They, they want to know, are you sure? Is that, is that, is that a safe thing to do? How do you explain that to them? How do you reassure them that, that yeah, I'll be fine? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, you say like, no, I'll be fine. I mean, they're okay. If you're, if you're walking the Camino Frances, especially, mm -hmm. that's probably the most popularly walked route to Santiago. Um, there are so many pilgrims. Now, I can only speak to pre-COVID and pre-pandemic. Right. So I think things are opening up now. I don't know the volume of, 
of pilgrims that are walking now. So it may differ a little bit, but I think it still is going to be the most popular route to Santiago. The infrastructure is so robust. They've got so many, well, they did at the time have so many hostels right. and albergues. Um, so I hope, I hope a lot of them have survived this crazy time. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I think, you know, yeah, let's, let's just say I, I, I hope that I hope they're all doing okay. Um, but there's so many pilgrims. So the safety, there is safety in numbers and you're walking, even when I was walking at like six o'clock in the morning in the dark, I would see a headlamp ahead or I, I would see a headlamp behind me. Um, I didn't feel unsafe. I, I really didn't. Uh, and you can see that in other people's blogs as well. You'll see people meeting up with other pilgrims that they, you know, ran into the night before and, oh, hey, Hey, you know, where are you walking to? And so I think what the friend says, at least, um, that's my experience that there are so many pilgrims on the way that um, that alleviates a little bit of concern and anxiety about the safety of walking by yourself across the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was talking to a former student of mine um, the, a month ago or so and was talking to her about it. And she said, there's no way I could do that alone. And I said, well, I'm not going to be alone. I just don't know the people I'm doing it with yet. Not that's yet, yeah. <laughs> so that's good to, good to know that that actually exists. So what was one cultural experience or tradition that you that surprised you while you were on the Camino and how did you respond to it? Um, I wouldn't say surprise because I, I knew about it, but, you know, like that sort of uh, that time of day, that siesta or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, right around two o'clock to like five or, I mean, they just, everything shuts down. <laughs> everything shuts down. I didn't know about, I, I, I want to say it's like on Mondays or is it Monday? Well, Sunday, Sundays are Mondays. I, I, I don't remember now. Um, we're just like shops weren't open. It, it was very, it was, it was challenging. Let's just say right. that it's challenging. Um, and you do have to plan ahead. So that is another thing about walking the Camino, you know, learn about these customs, uh, you know, it's a different country. They do things differently. Um, and so if you're, you know, planning to walk a day and you need, um, you need supplies, you need food and water, uh, make sure you get it the day before. Or if it's, if you're going to be walking, uh, yeah, if you're going to be walking on a day where everything's closed, you might want to get some stuff ahead of time. <laughs> so um, this is a, a new question. Um, so my understanding is that when you complete the, the, um, Camino de Santiago, whatever route you take, mm -hmm. that they ask you that there's three options of why you did it. So there's uh, for sport, or physical, there's spiritual, and there's religious. What was going into it? Which one of those would you pick? And when you came out of it, which one would you pick? Um, definitely went into it with the uh, spiritual religious component of it. Um, Although I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big hiker. So the adventure part of it, uh, sport was also part of it. So all of it was part of it, but the main reason I went was for religious, uh, religious reasons uh, and spiritual reasons. So, um, and then coming out of it, I would say exactly the same. I, I, I got out of it what I wanted to, and that's not to say that I had specific expectations about what I would gain. Mm -hmm. um, I went with an open mind because I think that's super important if you're doing like the spiritual, religious, or, you know, that kind of angle. Oh. Um, because, you know, I'm the kind of person that just doesn't want to be disappointed. And then I also want to be open to just whatever, you know, God or, you know, the universe or whatever it is um, has in store for me. So I wanted to just to be open to listen to that. Um, so it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I could really get that sense that there were times during your blogs, cause you blogged every day yeah. for like 38 days. I know you, you told me earlier that it took some time to get all those out, those videos out, but someone can go and we'll talk about your channel later, but you, you, someone can go to your channel and watch everything you did, right. Yeah. For, for those 38 days. And I was I was really impressed because I could see that, right? I could see you struggling in those videos. I can see you struggling. Um, like, do I do I take this route? Do I take this offshoot? Do I do I go to Samosa? Do you know what is it? You know, where am I going to go next? And um, 
and I could see that openness of just letting the experience happen. How did vlogging that experience, did that change it? Did you, cause I had somebody, I had somebody ask me like, so, um, so are you going to be on Instagram? And I'm like, yeah, you'll be able to see everything I'm doing on Instagram. And, and somebody else who was listening to the conversation said, well, I think if you go do something like that, you would want to sequester yourself from all technology. And, you know, <laughs> my response was, I'm going to be walking for five to eight hours a day. You know, I'll have plenty of time to think through things, <laughs> vlogging, you know, and be able to, you know, get online for a little bit when I get off. Yeah. How, how did vlogging that, do you think it changed your experience? Would you do that again? Or, or was, you know, how did that affect the overall experience for you? I will always be a vlogger. Um, <laughs> You know, everybody has their way of doing things and there's no wrong way or right way. Absolutely. You know, as I was preparing for my journey, people were like, oh no, you need to not have technology. Just listen to the birds and nature. And, uh, and that's well and good for, for you if that's what you want to do and, you know, go for it. Um, but like you said, walking that long, I think you do need some distraction. I would probably have gone a little bit <laughs> crazy if, if, if I didn't have someone to talk to, right. uh, you know, people journal, no one says like, oh, well, don't journal. Right. And exactly. this, was, this was my way of journaling. It was a video diary for me. It was a way to document my thoughts and my feelings. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I don't, I didn't share every single thought in my brain. I shared a lot and, and in my heart, but, uh, but that was a way for me to, to just get out what I was, what I was feeling. And, and that is like journaling. It's just video journaling. So that was an important part for me. And then also I wanted to share with my family and friends, obviously. Sure. Um, so, and to just have that documented, like, yeah, I did that. I walk across Spain, like when, when I am, when I'm in my golden years and I feel like I, I, you know, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can look back and say, I did that. <laughs> and it's fun. You know, so many memories and all those people that you meet a, a, along the way. And I think there were probably only a handful of people that I didn't even get photos or videos with. And, you know, that's the, probably the only thing I regret is, oh shoot, I never got a picture with so-and-so. And even if it was just a day or maybe even if I just had lunch with that person or we just talked a little bit about something, um, I just, oh, you know, I'll probably never see that person again. Uh, so, so to get a little wonky about the, about the Camino experience, all I ever hear, a lot of times all I ever hear is, it's your Camino. Right. Do it your way. Like you said a little bit ago, do it your way. It's yours. You know, don't let anybody tell you how to do it. And yet there's a certain point in the Camino where the trail gets a lot busier five days out from Santiago yeah. if you start in Syria. And, and your video on this day, you did admit that you were struggling. <laughs> I mean, just walked like 33 days. And then these people are like, hey, I got five days to go. And, you know. Yep. How did you, what was that struggle like? And I'll tell you exactly why I want to know is because um, I'm meeting my partner at Surya to finish. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I don't project that. <laughs> Gosh, you're just showing up for the last five days type thing. No, you're going to feel what you're going to feel and that's fine. Um, obviously you don't want it to impact negatively on their experience, right. but you're still going to have your feelings. Um, it was challenging because as I mentioned in my vlogs, you know, I totally get the excitement of starting out walking to Santiago. And if you watch my videos from the early days, you know, I'm walking with other people, we're laughing, we're dancing, we're saying, and it's, yeah, it can be a little bit annoying. I mean, I'm, I'm completely honest about that. It's a little bit annoying, you know, especially if you're at a point where you're more introspective and you want the quiet time to just, you know, you've walked all this time to Santiago. And um, I think even if you're just walking for sport and hiking, you know, walking that long and, you know, having quiet days, you just kind of want to savor that. Um, and yes, you can share in other people's excitement. So it was, it was difficult for me. I didn't want to be that judgmental person, but I'm human and I had, I, I had those feelings, um, but then, you know, you just kind of have to like take a step back and say like, okay, 
I get it. You know, they're excited. They're starting out. Yeah. And, uh, and then you just go about your, your business and you try to, you know, take the more quiet route, the quiet path. And if you want a little bit more quiet time, you just hang back a little bit. If that group ahead of you is just a little bit too loud or you know, whatever, <laughs> so, you know, you make adjustments and um, you try to see it from the other person's point of view and, you know, being in their shoes. So, if yeah. You, if you met another person who had not yet crossed the Camino off their bucket list, but was going to, mm -hmm. how would you finish this sentence? When, when you do, you have to blank. <laughs> you have to, oh, God, I, I'm sort of like that. Well, I'm not going to pick anything like specific, like you got to do this, you got to do that because okay. I'm of the like, you do you, you know, if there's something you want to see, follow your heart. So maybe it's follow your heart. Great. Maybe it's, I want you just do where do what the Camino is leading you to do. I think that is such an important thing. Now, as I mentioned, not everybody has the luxury to, you know, take a day off here to do this or whatever. But if you have the opportunity to like go off the beaten path, mm -hmm. um, there were some days where, you know, there were these things I saw in the guidebook. Um, and I thought, I want to do that. And you know, I did walk most of the Camino by myself, but if you're with a group, you know, uh, I would say, and if they didn't want to go see it, but you kind of really did just do it, uh, you know, follow your heart. It, it is your Camino. It's kind of cliche at this point, but it is really your Camino. And, you know, do you want to have that regret where you're like, oh yeah, I never really got to see that. Or yeah, we didn't really do that. Uh, I didn't want that. And I think because, I followed my heart and I listened to like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And this is my journey. I'm going to explore it. And um, I think that really, really enhanced my whole experience. And yeah, I have, I really have no regrets except the photos. <laughs> a couple people. <laughs> what item on your bucket list uh, will be completely different experience than the Camino? Oh and my gosh. The differences. So many things on the bucket list, right? Um, I think most of my bucket list items are like travel adventure kind of things. Uh, so, I mean, I do want to do another Camino. Uh, it's, and I think the next time I go, it will be purely just for, I mean, I think all of my adventures are spiritual in a way because it's just you're in nature and it's just, it evokes emotion, you know, deep, yeah. deep seated emotions. Um, but, you know, I'd love to, Oh, I'd love to do Patagonia. I'd love to hike around Patagonia. Uh, I would love to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would love to do all these amazing. I would love to uh, have the courage to make sauerkraut without worrying about killing my family with botulism. That's probably <laughs> different. <laughs> That's very different. <laughs> I bet you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I understand it. I uh, a lot of my things on my bucket list are definitely um, community based. Like oh, yeah. it's not necessarily hiking, but it's community based. So it's kind of hard to to say what would be different than the Camino. I mean, I guess uh, punk rock bowling in Vegas would probably be the, the the one that sticks out the most. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a punk rock music festival they have in Vegas every year, and at the same time, they have a bowling tournament that's open that you can submit a team. <laughs> so I've got a couple of friends that we're going to go. Eventually, we're going to go and go, because I, I do want to go to the festival, but I also want a bowling tournament, and I'm like, I don't care if we win. I just want to say that bowling. That is cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> on its face value is probably <laughs> the one that's most different than the Camino. So that is pretty, I had never heard of that. I might have to look that up and maybe I'll put it on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hope this does, right? This podcast, I hope that's what it does. People can hear other people's stories and what they're into and be like, yeah. Oh, wow, I'd love to do that. I'm going to put that on my list. So. Right. You don't know until like, until you, until you do. <laughs> oh, that was one of the things from one of your videos, the, the 88 temple um, pilgrimage, in uh, Shakur. 
somewhere uh, in Japan. Somewhere in Japan. I, one of in Japan. I, I didn't know about that until I watched one of your videos because there's a yeah. sister city uh, with it that you visited. And I was just like, oh, that goes on the list. That's I didn't know about the sister city thing. I didn't know that was like a sister city thing, but I had heard of that one. And I thought uh, that's obviously on my list too. <laughs> It's a little longer than the Camino. <laughs> so last question, um, what will be the next item you cross off your bucket list? Okay, so this one I do actually have something tangible. Uh, my friends and I are going, well, we have a permit to climb Mount Whitney uh, oh. later this fall. So, you know, fingers crossed. This is our second attempt. Uh, when was it? 2000, yeah, 2000, before COVID, um, that we had the fires. Right. And, uh, here in Southern California. So, uh, you know, they closed all of the, <laughs> they closed all of the trails and we were actually already up there oh. getting ready the day before they closed the trail. So we were extremely disappointed. Um, but luckily we got another permit and we're going to make it a second attempt this year. So I hope the, um, the weather will, will be uh, kind to us and you know we won't have as many fires this year it's it's always a thing in southern california but um yeah so that mount whitney mount whitney hopefully i will be standing at the top of the highest point of the contiguous continental usa in october <laughs> that is so awesome and what i love about that is that i'm a big fan of of your bucket list not being dreams but goals yeah. Yes. Because if you, because if you, you know, sit around and dream about something, um, it may never happen, could happen, it may not happen. But if you look at it as a goal, like it's achievable, right? It's measurable. Yeah. It's I like that. I, yeah, I never really thought of it that way, but yeah. absolutely. Dreams are could, goals. Yeah, I sure. Could, I could dream about playing for the NFL, but it ain't never going to happen, right? You <laughs> never know. You could go yeah. on a walk on or something. <laughs> I could get on the sidelines maybe if I try really hard. <laughs> But, you know, so, so I think, I think everything on a bucket list should be manageable and obtainable. And, and so that sounds like you're, you're on that direction. Uh, Rochelle, thank you so much for being here. Um, where can people find you uh, online to see your vlogs and get more information about, about your experiences? Uh, definitely YouTube would be my main one. I still actually have a handful of videos that I still need to upload because I did continue to vlog, even though I ended my pilgrimage at Santiago. I did continue on to Finisterre and Wuxia, which are also kind of um, sort of satellite, if you want to, routes mm -hmm. that people do continue to do after their pilgrimage. So YouTube, um, the channel is I'll Get There. It's all one word. Um, you could probably just, I'll get there in Santiago or Cam Camino de Santiago, you'll find me. Um, I do have a blog that is sort of dormant at the moment because I've been like <laughs> dedicating all my time to the videos. Yeah. But I think once all the videos are up, I'll probably go back to the, to the blog and uh, sort of document in uh, sort of prose <laughs> and some video and some and photographs actually uh, of the journey and uh, and I'm on Instagram I'll get there just look it up <laughs> thank you so much for being here I really appreciate your time uh, like I do recommend if someone's trying to put together a trip to the Camino no matter which route you take we'll watch Rochelle's videos they are awesome and uh, you will binge them like you binge anything else on <laughs> So. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoy this. And I could talk about this, the Camino forever. So I really appreciate this opportunity. <laughs> well, as you continue to cross things off your bucket list, let us know and I will gladly have you back. So thank you. Thank you.